Good morning. It's Monday the 12th of September 2011. We're here at the River Tichborne, or the Tichborne Stream, as it's known, um, a tributary of the River Itchen. And we can just see the stream here behind us. And what we're doing today, and the reason I'm here, is to download some data from our turbidity loggers, currently measuring the turbidity in stream here at the Tichborne and we can just see actually quite close to us just beyond this barbed wire fencing is the herd of Herefords that is grazing in this field and what this little video I'm going to show to you today is is really introducing this site uh, this is the location for the GPS cattle collars and we're correlating that with in-stream water quality measurements and this really is an introduction to the site explaining why it's been chosen and uh, what makes it such a, a good location for this study. So the stars on the show here at the Tichborne Stream is this herd of Herefords and uh, they're quite a bit different from the Holsteins that we studied in our observational study in 2010 on the River Meon. Uh, this herd is comprised predominantly of females although there are also calves uh, a couple of bullocks and uh, a couple of bulls and the difference in the herd structure affects behavior as does the fact that there are different genders and different ages here and also the breed. The breed is very important. Herefords are generally a lot heavier than most other types of breed of cattle and so it is foreseeable that their geomorphic impact in terms of the amount of force that they exert upon the soil and also the riverbanks may be greater than that that we witnessed with the Holsteins on the River Meon. What you can hopefully see here, one of the cattle that is actually nearest to us in the shot here, um, is the GPS collar uh, on the animal as it's grazing there. It might be a little bit difficult to see in this video, but hopefully you can. And these collars impair the animal um, in no way. They have no negative influence on behaviour. Uh, they weigh less than 1% of the animal's body weight and so it's no hindrance to carry it around. And the great thing, of course, with the GPS data is that we get this brilliant spatial information that's quite difficult to pick up from observation alone. And so hopefully, um, if we combine this with our data from last year, of the animal behaviour, we'll be able to get a really strong picture of the way these animals affect Chalk River environments. And so here we have one of the individuals that is equipped with a GPS collar. Slightly better quality video here as we're a lot closer. And in fact we're quite lucky we've got two of the animals that have the GPS collars. And in this herd of 30 or 35 cattle, only three of them are equipped with these remote devices which record their location in space and uh, they really are invaluable we're going to learn and have already learned so much about the way these animals interact with their environment and uh, we've varied the the animals that the collars go on each time so it's always been different individuals and also uh, the gender of the animals we've, we've gone for for bullocks as well as as well as females with the with the GPS cattle collars, and as you can see as they graze away, they um, seem to seem to be looking quite stylish. I'd say looking quite stylish. So the River Tichborne is your archetypal chalk stream. It's a tributary of the much larger River Itchen, and as you can see as we look at the river and the area that is uh, fenced off to prevent cattle access. It's a pretty diverse vegetation community here. Um, there's a lot of variability in terms of the height of the sward, also the species composition, and if we look into the area that's grazed, we can see that far from being some kind of barren wasteland that's been subject to overgrazing, there are a large number of flowers, um, we have some clovers uh, and we can see some thistles doing quite well over here and there's variable height in the vegetation and, and all this diversity leads to, leads to more species, more plant species and, and therefore more invertebrate species. 
In terms of the in-stream effects here at the Titchbourne stream, the uh, impact of cattle seems, anecdotally at least, to be quite minimal. Yes, there is bank destabilisation. Yes, you have got some areas where the cattle have access um, is being exposed. Uh, the chalk bedrock is, is exposed here, as we can see. And of course, as we've recorded in previous studies, uh, these, these areas of cattle access are, are defecation hotspots, and so you do get these uh, cow pats here. But generally speaking, it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, there is exposed bank material, and there is a bit of bank destabilisation, but also you have large areas that are fully vegetated. And again, this is, this is creating diversity in the habitat. Just final word on the study site, obviously it's a lovely environment to work in, we're very grateful to two people in particular, um, Robert Rames, who's the grazier and landowner here, and also Ruikins uh, for telling us about this location and uh, giving us the idea to use the Titchbourne, to use the GPS collars here. We will be having further updates from this river and there will undoubtedly be results coming out of this over the coming months. Obviously stay in contact via the website and also on Twitter as well as on the project YouTube channel and uh, yeah we'll try and keep you up to date.